Proposer builder separation is one way Ethereum is implementing modular design. Um, Post-merge Ethereum will trigger a paradigm shift that's much more far-reaching than mere switch from proof-of-work to proof-of-stake. Adopting a modular approach at the infrastructure level may usher in a new breed of stakeholder, the block builder. Under proof-of-work, Ethereum has two major stakeholders on the transaction side, users and miners. There are, of course, several other key groups, such as core developers, exchanges, and wallets, but without users and miners, there would be no network. Users pay gas fees to have their transactions processed by miners who collect those transactions from the Ethereum mempool, which is a database of unconfirmed transactions, and place them into blocks in a specific order. Miners typically operate in groups called mining pools. The idea is to pool resources in order to generate a consistent level of revenue for each miner and to benefit from the experience, expertise, and software infrastructure of the mining pool operator. Mining pool operators are very powerful players in the Ethereum network because their ability to determine transaction order and therefore extract maximal extractable value, aka minor extractable value, depending on you know when you're talking about it, for all blocks processed by their pool. MEV involves optimizing the mining process to maximize revenue. This is typically achieved by determining which transactions to include and in what order. Ideally, the most profitable configuration of transactions with the highest level of fees is chosen. According to Crypto Compare, only five mining pools controlled 65.4% of mining activity on Ethereum network last November. That raises serious concerns about centralization deep in Ethereum's infrastructure. Case in point, Ethermine alone controlled 25% of all mining during that month. As Ethereum switches from proof of work to proof of stake, miners will disappear and validators will replace them. There will be a key difference, however, instead of combining the process of creating and validating blocks, Ethereum's post-merge proof of stake system will adopt a modular approach. Modularity is where is when individual components of a system independently execute specific tasks. The concept has been around in computer science since the 1960s. We saw the emphasis of modularity when ETH1 and ETH2 were renamed. Ethereum's original proof of work chain became ETH1, the execution layer where Ethereum's applications reside, while the beacon chain became ETH2, the consensus layer where nodes will agree on the state of the network. Hey, we're getting a good explanation. The modular approach will eventually carry over into the processing of the transactions in the form of proposer build separation, PBS. In its most basic sense, PBS simply involves splitting blocks, building and block validation into two distinct activities. I do think this creates personally more points of failure for the network in general and is a concern that I've had, but yeah. The result is a new stakeholder group called the Block Builder. In a recent episode of the Bankless podcast, Matt Cutler, co-founder and CEO of Block Native, provided an overview of, a, of Block Builders and how he sees them cooperating with others' key stakeholders in the Ethereum ecosystem. Cutler describes how MEV searchers and miners currently interact. Searchers typically use sophisticated bots to seek to maximize MEV in a variety of ways. Some of those ways, like arbitrage, are benign, while others, like front-running, are perceived as malicious. I do perceive front-running as malicious personally. In either case, the searcher sequences transactions, produces a revenue-optimized transaction bundle, and then offers that bundle to a miner or validator for inclusion in a block and in exchange for a cut of the profits. In a post-merge proof-of-stake system, block builders will enter the scene. Instead of searchers offering transactions directly to validators, also called proposers, they will send optimized transaction bundles to block builders. A third-party system called MEV Boost will then aggregate optimized blocks from a variety of builders and offer them to validators. Finally, validators will select and propose the most profitable blocks to the Ethereum network. So we're adding in yet another piece here, a third party. I do not, uh, the way I read this, I do not think this is better than the current uh, setup, but I probably need to understand this a little bit more. So is this, okay. Network, mempool, searchers, bundles, builder, relay, MEV boost, and then to the consensus layer. As opposed to everything being done in the execu execution client, right? And over.
Here come the block builders. Flashbots, the creator of MEV Boost, explained that MEV centralization occurs when mining and staking pools vertically integrate with trading firms to increase MEV profit. The Flashbots website claims MEV Boost was created to prevent post-merge MEV centralization and to cultivate a diverse network of block builders. According to Cutler, the Ethereum community is also bullish on MEV Boost that developers can can or plan to incorporate the concept of PBS into Ethereum's core protocol a year or two after the transition to proof of stake. That's a long time. In the meantime, if all goes according to plan, MEV Boost will be available immediately after the merge. Okay. So there you go. So not into the Ethereum core protocol, but it will be available. The following is an overview of network activity on the Ethereum beacon chain over the past week. For more information about the metrics uh, in this section, you can check out the explainer. Um, what do we got? We're down 55 validated, pending validators and down 8% on deposits. So there is waning support for proof of stake is what it looks like to me. The UK government is seeking comments on the tax. Okay. And that is it. So there we go. Um, so what are they doing? They're essentially creating a third party to manage MEV. That's how I read it. Let me know if that sounds correct to you. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.